I want to analyze the impact on the real returns to factors when the price of Y goes up and the price of X stays the same. So what do I mean by the real returns? That is the ability of different members of society to buy products. It's the standard of living. It's the, um, they're uh, really a measure of their economic circumstances measured by how much they can buy with what they earn. And we're going to do this in this video in the so-called very short run. This is a, a situation where really people are stuck in the industry where they're employed. Uh, the machines can't be easily transformed into another, uh, into another industry. Workers don't have the time or the skills required to move to another industry. And what we're going to see is that the, the impact of the price changes uh, depends very much on exactly where you're employed. So we've got here two different industries, goods X, good X and good Y, where you've got the amount of capital used in, uh, in good X, the amount of labor used in good X, and similarly for Y and they can't move. So the number, the machines can't move from industry to industry, the work, workers can't move from industry to industry. So I'm going to have two different versions of this. I'm going to do the graphical version in this video. And as you recall, we've got a value of the marginal product of labor of X, where this is the total labor supply in the economy, and the amount of labor used in good X is measured from this axis, and the amount of good Y is measured from this other axis. If you recall, the value of marginal product of labor in Y is the price of Y multiplied Y times the marginal productivity of labor in Y, which is going to be equal to the wage in that sector. The same way the wage in X is, is going to be the price of X multiplied times the marginal productivity of, of labor in that sector. And the wage that causes there to be equilibrium in the labor market, that is to say where workers have no incentive to move back and forth, is where these two demand curves for labor meet. And we have initially this many workers in X this many workers in Y. <clears throat> and if you recall, we've got these different um, depictions of the, the payments to labor and capital in these two, um, in these two graphs. So for example, for uh, labor, the total amount that labor gets in industry X is given by this box. In this area, is the amount that capital earns in good Y. This is the nominal return in good, the capital in good Y, and they, they earn this much wage times that much labor. Okay, so here's the initial situation before a price has gone up. So we're going to have the price of Y rise and we're going to keep the price of X constant. Now this price of Y could be going up for all sorts of different reasons. It could be because this country has liberalized trade, Y is the exported goods so that the, uh, the price of Y goes up because of new export opportunities. It could be because good Y is imported and there has been a, an increase in the, in the price of of why because of an import restriction, it really doesn't matter. But when we increase 
the price of Y, what's going to happen is that the value of marginal product of labor is going to increase proportionately. Now, there's a video about the, uh, uh, this depiction, this shift, when looking at just the factor markets and uh, labor market in isolation. So I would urge you to, uh, to take a look at that. I'm going to draw this a little bit differently to, to, to emphasize this a little more because this really is a proportional increase in the value of marginal product of labor in Y. Okay, so if labor cannot move between the two sectors, the labor in Y is going to remain exactly where it is, and what you have is that the wage in Y is going to go up by the full amount of the price increase in good Y. So it gets scaled up. So the wage in Y is going to go up by the full percentage increase in the price of Y. So the way we depict that is by a little hat. This is a standard uh, notation. The percentage change in the wage in the very short run for Y, so this is percentage change, is going to be equal to the percentage change in good Y. So the wage rises by the full amount of the price rise in Y. Okay. This, this amount. And the payments to capital, recall that's this area initially, it rises to this area after the price increase. And this box, this later box, is the, it increases by the full percentage change in the price in Y. In other words, the, oh, write this, the very short run percentage change in the payments to capital is equal to the percentage change in the very short run for labor is equal to the percentage change in the, per, in the price of Y, which is greater than zero. So everything gets scaled up in the Y sector. Every, the payments to labor, the payments to capital get scaled up in the sector whose price has gone up. At the same time, there's really nothing that's happened to the nominal price in good X. The wage in good X in the very short run does not change because the price of X in this example has not changed. Nothing has changed the marginal productivity. Nothing has changed the price. The, the very short run impact on the payments to labor in, the, in, in sector X doesn't change. The same way with the, the percentage change in the very short run in good X, it's still this box. Okay, so there's no change in the nominal return to labor or capital in good X. So what about the real returns? Okay, now we want to ask about the ability of labor and capital 
to purchase goods. So let's first start with labor. A worker in industry Y, the industry where the price has gone up, they get a raise. The price of Y has gone up by 10%, their wage goes up by 10%. So they can buy the same amount of Y as they did before. 10% more expensive, they got a, a raise of 10%, no effect there. But workers in this sector can buy more X. The price of X hadn't changed. So workers in the Y industry cannot possibly be worse off. The more they buy of X, the better off they are because they've gotten a raise and the price of X hadn't changed. Exactly the same thing for capital in industry Y. They can buy the same amount of Y, but more X. So the real returns to labor and capital in Y has gone up as the price of Y has increased. They get the full benefits out of this. They share labor and capital alike in the expansion of economic opportunity in the industry where the price has gone up. Exactly the opposite happens in, the, in, in Industry X. Capital uh, hasn't received, I mean, they have the same payment that they did before. Labor in Industry X has the same payment as they, they did before, and the price of X hasn't changed. So their ability, labor and capital, to buy X has not changed at all. They're, I mean, in terms of X, no no effect. But labor and capital uh, to ability to buy Y has decreased. They've had a no change in their wage, no change in their payments to capital, but good Y has gotten more expensive. So the real returns to labor and capital in industry X has definitely gone down in the very short run. So what you have here is this stark dichotomy between the impact of this policy depending on whether you're in the X industry or the Y industry. What really matters is whether or not the price of your good has gone up or gone down. If the price of Y has gone up and you're employed in the uh, Y sector, you think this is great. Your ability to buy more of the other goods has increased. The same way if you're in the industry who, where the relative price has fallen, because the price of X stays the same and the price of Y goes up, then you're going to see that labor and capital are hurt in this, in this industry. So the in the end, this change right here can be depicted in the following way. The price of Y goes up and the price of X stays the same. The relative price, the price of X compared to the, compared to the price of Y, has gone down. And we've worked through those results you would have exactly the same direction of changes if the price of X went down and the price of Y stayed constant. You would have these relative prices. I mean, I would um, urge you to go through that analysis as well. What matters, or they both could be going up, but the price of Y goes up by more than the price of X, relative price goes down, same general effects on the uh, payments to labor and capital. But in short, the, the impact of labor and capital in the very short run is wholly dependent on the industry where you're employed. If you can't move, if labor and capital cannot move, then your economic interests are tied exclusively to the industry in which you're in.